Here we go. This is Real World Audio, and we are continuing our uh, search for the holy grail of loudspeakers. And uh, the first part, we looked at uh, the commercial solution, what uh, Stereophile thinks is the holy grail of loudspeakers, and certainly it has uh, extreme textural resolution, and there are tricks employed by uh, these uh, approaches that artificially bump up the perceived uh, textural detail level and uh, however the low side is uh, I almost said a, a very um, non-fitting word about what sort of dynamic resolution we are getting uh, but it because of the dynamic compression you are still hearing those uh, low details in at a high level so that's why you can hear diana crow's lips like nom, nom, those uh, sounds you can hear the lips you can hear her saliva and uh, before she uh, just uh, sings the 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 sharp c um and uh and and that's because the dynamic range is compressed so much that those whisper soft voices and sounds that you would normally hear only if you are standing next to the singer and those sounds which are at such high level when she's uh, singing at the peak of her voice it's so loud that you were still standing at the distance where she's smacking the lips and you can hear that if she would sing in your ears from that distance you would go deaf uh, and uh, that's the dynamic range that we are looking at and and these loudspeakers are compressing that dynamic range to such a narrow range that you can enjoy it on a recording so so in in one way this is a, a blessing and uh, and and this extreme dynamic compression allows you to observe such phenomena that you never ever get to observe in a live concert because you are never ever going to be that close to her or to any singer in a live performance sitting in, in an audience that you're going to hear her lips smacking before she's uh, starting the singing of her song and and this this uh, approach is very good when uh, you want this sort of uh, turn a public experience into an intimate experience it's really uh, fine but if you want to enjoy uh, an experience like a symphonic orchestra and feel like you are sitting in the hall it will not work because everything will sound compressed and 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 the price you are really paying for compression is that you always have to uh, listen to it at a very loud level so it's going to erode your ears on the long term so if you don't want to blare your speakers all the time then ironically the choice is to go for ultra efficient loudspeakers and i would say ironically because these loudspeakers are tremendously huge in size so you would expect that they are always playing extremely loud but that's the furthest from the truth possible because the 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 greatest strength of the very high efficiency of the ultra efficiency loudspeakers is that you can play them at whisper soft volume levels and they will still sound uh, full range because when you have the multi-way DSP high excursion solution you need to crank it up to sound kick ass if you start turning the volume down the sound stage will collapse the bass will disappear and uh, and and you will lose resolution but with these big guys if you are turning the volume up or down first of all uh, you don't even notice if if you are changing the volume now i'm going to do something i'm going to show my speakers they are just a fraction of the size of the voice of the theaters but they are stu still tremendously huge speakers 
they are about uh, 300 liters each that's that they are like the size of a refrigerator each and and with these guys when i'm listening to uh, the stereo i can turn the volume control up this much and turn it down that much and nelly she doesn't even notice that i change the volume control so so the volume controlling becomes such a different thing that it's not anymore a switch that you have to fiddle around that oops did, did, did i switch it to this position or one lower or one higher because here it sounds great now oh oh not enough bass here oh now it's too much it's hurting my ears only this and then you put on another song you put on work now i have to find out now this is the optimal setting and you 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 go nuts because with the uh, low efficiency solutions you will have to fiddle around with your volume control to get the single volume where it sounds great and and the problem with that is most of the cases that single position will yield a very loud music and it's going to hurt your ears after a while and and with these big buggers with the ultra efficient solution i can listen to whatever volume i want i i was just listening to this recording and this is a full symphony orchestra playing for us and i was listening to it at a, a soft level a soft to medium it was medium at, at the forte when they were playing the kettle drums and then the whole orchestra was playing together and and guys uh, the the experience that i had was uh, was just like sitting at a concert hall sitting at the uh at, at not not in the front but in the rear like my like the last third of the seats and i had the same uh experience and why i'm telling that because this is a mono recording and when you are in a or in a concert hall let's say the musicians are playing here this is the concert hall. these are the seats if you are in the very front then it sounds like a stereo recording because you hear the orchestra and, and you can pinpoint the instruments but if you go further away from the back side if, if you have a seat here from there it really a live orchestra sounds as if it was a mono recording and i'm not making this up i go to live symphonic events a lot and when i go i also listen to them as an audiophile and compare the live experience in a critical listening mode i put myself in the same mode as i'm listening to my stereo system to hear those acoustic cues that i hear for a live concert and i've been doing that for more than two decades and i can tell you guys that when you are in the rear it pretty much uh, sounds like a very good stereo system playing a mono or a very good mono system playing a recording and this very example that i just had it it was truly uh, i had the exact same experience sitting in my uh, couch listening to it it sounded just as if i was sitting somewhere here in an audience in a live concert hall and i heard the orchestra playing here and it was just absolutely fantastic the uh, the bass instruments uh, like like when when there was the double bass coming up kettle drums they had their weight their authority their authenticity the energy despite me playing it very very soft and uh, and that's why i'm calling uh, these guys uh, one crack at the holy grail the the very high ultra high efficiency solution as uh, now i need to adjust my camera back on the tripod not an easy task but here we go kind of succeeded good so that's why it is a step up in the holy grail road to go to an ultra efficient solution and you see we went down from a six seven eight nine way 
uh, multi band small cabinet solution to a single cabinet two way speaker. You see, the, we have a compression driver for the mid and high frequencies, and we have uh, a woofer, uh, a ported woofer for the uh, lower mid range and, uh, and, and the bass frequencies. And, uh, and what we get this way is, is absolutely superb dynamics. And that, trans that dynamic range translates to this ability that you are allowed to play music as soft as you want to. And it, you will still get the same experience, a live experience. It's not going to collapse on you. The scale stays. Because when you have a, a, a low efficiency driver, when you turn the volume down, the scale is compressing and collapsing. So basically your band that was this size, as you turn the volume down, it, it's shrinking. And, and then you lose enjoyment. With these big buggers, with ultra efficient speakers, I would say like above 100 dB uh, per watt meter efficiency, that's kind of like a magical land for efficiency. Uh, then even when you are turning the volume down, the scale stays the same. And, and uh, it just feels that the vibrancy, the, the life content or, or the emotional connection, that's the one that's just being scaled down. And if I turn the volume up, it feels like uh, the emotional uh, connection is, is getting dialed up up and up and up and up and and when you listen to it very loud then it's it's kind of like uh, like driving your brain to to nuts and and you have let me let out the cat so it and it will feel to you that uh, that the emotional content coming from the music is just getting more and more intense it's, it, it, it's a very, very peculiar phenomenon. And uh, apart from uh, my friends from Jeff's uh, Altex and, and my, uh, my speakers, I never ever heard it in any audio system ever. Uh, so, so it's not something that you are going to find at any corner or experience anywhere. Uh, but it's truly something of a holy grail land uh, effect, but it is something which is possible and where we can all grow towards like. And, and, and also, as a result, this, uh, because we don't have the, this, the sound range cut up to a million uh, frequency bands coming from different sources with their own personalities, we have a natural image um, and, and a very lifelike presentation. And uh, its strength is its weakness, and the strength is it that it gives you a lifelike presentation. And a lot of people take it as a weakness because it just does not sound processed, it doesn't sound sculpted, it doesn't sound high-tech, it just sounds real. And, and for, for most of our sensitivities, especially being uh, used, being addicted to the showroom high-end sound, going back to natural sound is, uh, is kind of like a withdrawal. It's like you are withdrawing the candy from the drug addict. And, 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 and it's not fun anymore because you are missing those psychedelic colors that the, that the system puts into the sound. Um, also, uh, there are some uh, problems with, with these uh, big uh, Altec uh, A5s is that uh, actually on paper it is a weakness that they work down to 40 Hz only. Actually they work lower than that but like plus minus uh, 3 or 6 dB that's their point 40 Hz. Like I think that's their minus 6 dB but, but that's just on paper in your actual living room, it depends totally on your room acoustics what is the minus 3 or minus 6 dB point. It can be quite different from 40 Hz and you can be getting a, a much lower extension from them. Uh, 
and and eventually the big problem is that if you want lower extension i actually i cannot really think why you would want lower than that because the uh, base is so much more complicated than the number and then telling that oh i have a system that goes down to 20 hertz is it better than uh, do i have better base than the other system which goes down to 40 only you cannot tell those are just numbers and it means that there's a greater uh, percentage of the frequency band that is accessible to you it does not tell you anything about the quality of that frequency band maybe you are getting 20 hertz more but but uh, most likely the everything below 200 per, uh, hertz is is a uh, pretty much a, a crap fast compared uh, if, if that you get from a sub compared to what you get with the altex between 240 hertz you are getting aces and when you are getting aces for that frequency range you will notice that the base is just light years better than what you would get from a, a crappy sub even if that crappy sub costs like twenty thousand dollars but it goes down to 20 hertz or maybe 15 hertz it's it's it just doesn't stand a chance compared to these guys what you would ha hear as a drum or as a cello but well if you want to hear the submarine crashing on an iceberg sure power to you uh, subwoofer for you and blow up your neighbors destroy your ears and and have fun with the iceberg I, I I do not really want to judge, but that that that's that's the realistic scenario because that's what's going to happen. Neighbors going to hate you, your family. If they are not watching you, the Titanic movie, uh, they're just passively trying to work in the next room. They're going to hate you and want to divorce you, and your hearing is going to decline within two years pretty badly. Um, uh, but apart from that, let's just come back to these Altex and the biggest problem is they have just like a 0.000% wife acceptance factor because they're just so huge, it's, it's impossible to bring them to almost any living room. There are a few of us who have a living room big enough to fit them in. My living room certainly is not nearly big enough to have them here. And even my friend Jeff, who has the, these big speakers, uh, even he does not have the extra panels around the side, so his is only, only the, this wide as between my fingers. But even that is enormous. And, and he has his uh, speakers set up in his garage in the basement because family would not allow it in, in the living room. So if we could get around these... Uh, limitations then we would truly find something uh, that's worthy of calling as the next level of holy grail right uh, because even though I just told you guys that if you have uh, excellent bass down to 40 Hertz that kills any system that goes down to even to 15 Hertz but with a, a compressed subwoofer if you have Altec quality bass going to 40 Hz, it's insanely good and better than uh, compressed stuff down to 20. But, but, what if you could have Altec quality bass down to 20 Hz? And accidentally, I, I bumped into that uh, with my speakers. Uh, I my intention was uh, me actually my intention was to bring them down to 20 hertz to uh, to hear an octave below the Altex octave and and it worked out and and my experience with that is that uh, for most of the music uh, most of the recorded music it doesn't make uh, a big difference from uh, what you are hearing with the, with these Altex but there there's a genre of music and especially it's electronic music uh, that has a lot of extremely deep bass content which is like 20 hertz and below 20 hertz for those type of music uh, being able to hear that low frequency range in an altec quality 
it's uh, it's something that I never thought uh, possible to experience in in a human form. It's something that that's truly extraordinary, and that truly uh, gave me access to a wide range of music that that I personally. Actually, I like those things before. I am from the generation that we started growing up already uh, on uh, like music, like like rave music, techno, and stuff like that. Al although these rave and techno are like most of it is is kind of like considered as a junky stuff, but all of these uh, genres do have uh, certain uh, songs, certain elements which are of higher quality, and and which. I mean higher musical value and, and which can give you an experience that's truly unique and extraordinary and I think that's what music is about that's what stereo is about so that you have an experience uh, it's, it's much more than just sound if you are at that level does it sound better or not uh, yeah it's, 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 it's I get it but to me it's all about the experience and, and if you're uh, loudspeaker allows you to have a whole new range of experiences that you previously never ever would have considered as, as a valid uh, source of experience, then I think that is the holy grail because it gives you life, it gives you access. And when you turn to a solution that, uh, that although uh, takes a narrow range of recording to an exceptional performance level although that's very commendable very loadable but to me that is not the holy grail because it takes away 90 percent of the experiences from you and it just uh, narrows you down to a very narrow range and it turns you into a person who is seeking for those few recordings that are suitable for those speakers. And, and to me, what I'm looking for, uh, I'm, I'm real-world audio because I'm looking for real-world music. I want to play everything that the world has to offer for me. Yes, and I even want uh, have the need to even enjoy the crappy pop music or crappy movie uh, soundtracks that we have nowadays that uh, our industry is doing. And if you have the technology to make uh, that enjoyable, to give you uh, the most that it can offer, it, it's truly, I think that's the holy grail. So uh, now I already hit 20 minutes again. And, and this will be part of the next video uh, before we hit that step because uh, this is an effort that was done by Jadi to, to bring us this experience, the voice of the theater experience and, and get around these shortcomings and Jadi found a solution for that so he's, they found a solution to bring it lower than 40 hertz to, to make it manageable in size and, and being able to use it without a subwoofer and, um, and also, um, well, let's see about it in the next episode. So thank you guys, have an awesome day, bye bye.